Hello, hello dear friends, welcome back. Uh, we are discussing the unit number four, paper aquaculture. Now today in this lecture we will discuss what is mariculture and the species for use for mariculture means number of uh, fish species that used in a mariculture. So before the fish species discuss, we will discuss about what is mariculture. Okay, so the mariculture, what is polyculture? So mariculture is a specialized branch of aquaculture involving the cultivation of marine organisms for the purpose of food and other products in an enclosed section of the sea that is uh, in the form of cages or in the form of paints or in tanks, ponds or raceways which are filled with a slime water that is called mariculture. So generally the mariculture production data focuses on commercial data which is the output of marine and brackish farming activities for the profit whose final harvest is used for human consumption. Okay. And it is, it is, uh, nowadays what the seafood, demand of the seafood is very in large quantities number of people they uh, prefer the seafood so that's why this mariculture is very uh, play a crucial role okay so it is a promising sector that's why it is very promising sector by which the additional marine fish requirement can be made in the future years okay and it is also the fastest growing subsector of aquaculture okay so see here in this aquaculture it is a uh, this mariculture is a subsector of aquaculture and this uh, mariculture is a very fast growing sector. Okay, now we will discuss the types of mariculture. Different kinds of mariculture are uh, presented here according to the subdivision by a species type. So different types of species require different systems that have different characteristics and effects. So number one, the mollusk culture. So the in that particular, the brood stock and seed supply. We know the bivalve uh, mollusk. Just in our previous lecture, we discussed uh, we have discussed the uh, mussel culture. Okay. So the bivalve mollusk larvae are either collected from natural grounds using a material to which they adhere, or produced in a hatcheries by artificial fertilization. It is one of the type of mariculture, so the brood stock or the seed supply, then the grow, the larvae that have set to the substrate are grown in hanging cultures, uh, suspended from floating rafts or long lines on strings, trays, stacks or mesh bags, vertical or the rack culture, again in the sticks or the platforms, and bottom culture, the shells, the stones, the rocks or cement slabs added to the ground or in a land based system just uh, uh, these are this is the uh, we can say the technique uh, by use to use this grow out the number of uh, larvae ok now the fin fish culture so again again, again here brood stock and seed supply the brood stock can be domesticated or a mix of domesticated and wild animals. Most species are grown from larvae or fry produced in hatcheries and spawning is often stimulated with the hormone applications. Okay, so whenever uh, we think about the growth of the fishes, mean fish culture in this marine sector or in the married culture so the growth means so see the cage culture can be divided into insure and offshore cages and can be fixed floating or the submerged in condition so you can see in this picture this is the floating cages it is very large in numbers their size also huge so uh, insure cages are located in a protected shallow areas with less water circulation just insurance near to the shore, uh, shore so they are located in a protected zone their area is shallow and 
the water circulation in that particular area is less as compared to the offshore cages so the offshore cages are located in deep water and open areas with less protection from storm but with a better water exchange so you can just see in this picture this is uh, the picture of this uh, offshore cages they are centrally uh, placed in the sea water okay and uh, they are not uh, protected by the storm but the circulation water circulation of water is more okay means uh, we can say the uh, the environment of this particular cages is good and the species that we have culture in the particular cages they are also uh their growth is good because uh, two important thing is there one is the artificial um, uh, the natural production uh, natural food that is the plankton they are also uh, present in ample uh, in ample quantity plus uh, in addition to the natural food the in cage culture the artificial food is also feeding is also important factor so uh, the all the cages they are uh, means the artificial feeding is given to the fishes that culture in this particular cages okay so it is very good uh, growth type of culture in the sea now the net and fish pen are located in shallow water and their edges are anchored to the bottom you know the pen culture uh, we have uh, discussed in pen culture little bit uh, in our previous previous lecture so the uh, wall of bamboo bamboo poles and they are also anchored to the bottom also okay and a typical fish pond system consists of the following basic components pond compartments enclosed by the dikes canals for the supply and drain of water and gates or water control structures so fin fish culture in this way the uh, by the using this cage culture technology the fishes they are cultured in a very large quantities nowadays okay now when uh, the where in um, where is india in mariculture so mariculture in india so mariculture is the rearing again uh, aquatic organisms under the control or semi control conditions in coastal and offshore waters where the salinity is maximal and not subject to significant daily or seasonal variations we have uh, the salinity is very important so uh, you have to clear uh, taken for that uh, when we uh, when we select the place for the um, any many culture activity okay uh, for example the cage culture or the pain culture now the many culture contributes to the production of protein rich food and has been the source of livelihood of millions of coastal villagers so see this is one of the very important aspect in the mari culture because it is not only uh, given the food or the it is not uh, it's not only given to the protein rich food to the people but also they have number of uh, thousands of lakhs of families that are depend on these um, livelihood uh, because of this uh, number of villagers they get a job they get employment because of this activity so the mariculture play a very crucial role in the uh, we, can, we can say the economy of our country also okay so the global production from the marine environment increased from 21.6 million ton in 1999 to to uh, 27.6 million tons in 2003 again in 2003 the mariculture contributed to 91% of the global total production from both the marine and the brackish water environment now the how much uh, uh, this is the non fin fish uh, non fin fish culture so the mollusk farming the mollusk we have just uh, earlier lecture we have discussed the mollusk the, it is characterized by their sedentary mode of the life and high nutritive profile how been farm since several centuries okay so the oyster the clams then the mussels and the uh, scallops are the major group of this bivalve form and apart from these marine pearl marine pearl oysters are also form uh, form for the gems they produced and the lustrous pearls and the mother of pearl that is the pearl oyster shell okay so you can see this picture these two, two ladies they are doing uh, oyster or the mussel farming okay so the oyster farming oysters are one of the most valued seafood and are farmed extensively nearly 12 species of oyster as commercially popular of these the carostria gigas is the most important species and in asia 4.2 million tons of oysters were produced during the 2003 of which 3.6 million tons was from china 
and contributing to 87% of the continent's OSTA production. Okay, so you know the uh, China is the major country to produce this OSTA. In India, uh, when uh, when think about the India in the Clostridia madrasinensis, then the C griffoids, C valeris, Sacotria, uh, Calcutta are the main OSTA species available, and of these, the madrasinensis. Uh, Crossetria metastasis, commonly known as the Indian backwater oyster, is the most preferred species for the farming in our country. Okay, now the mussel farming. Uh, we have just discussed in our uh, previous lecture the mussel culture. So the mussel farming is one of the also most important popular mariculture operation in the temperate countries. The global production of this farmed mussel has been estimated as 1.5 uh, 1.58 million tons in 2003 uh, then registering an increase of uh, 22.8 times over that of 1950 so the contribution from 40 nations farming nearly nine different species belonging to the genus perna and the mytilus and few others showing byssus formation okay so apart from being rich in protein and vitamins Muscles have several medicinal properties also. So, these uh, because of this uh, property, these muscles they have um, culture to in various countries near about uh, 40 nations. Okay, so the green lipped muscle, one of the muscle is there. Green lipped muscle is taken as a food supplement in over 20 countries and mainly to help in maintaining the mobility of the joints. So these uh, muscles they are helpful to the joint pain so that's why uh, they are also a medicinal property and hence these muscle farming is day by day they are uh, increases and the uh, number of people they are getting not only food from these muscle farming but also some because of some medicinal property they are also used as a medicine okay now these muscles have also an anti inflammatory anti histamine prophylactic and the therapeutic properties in and currently research is being carried out for developing an effective low cost anti aids drug from the muscle meat so see here these muscles their importance so that's why these muscle farming is now uh, increases okay because of their uh, medicinal property, because here these uh, low cost anti AIDS drug also uh, some country uh, uh, try to develop by using the muscle meat. So that's why the muscle farming also is important in the mariculture. Okay. Now, marine pond farming. So apart from the muscle, we know the muscle culture, why they are culturing, why they are farming of muscle because of one is uh, is for meat purpose another is for medicinal value is there okay but along with these muscles some uh, marine pearl farming is there so pearl we know the jewel of, from the sea is one of the oldest known gems and it is produced by the pearl oyster okay that pearl oyster farming that pearl oyster culture we have already discussed in very uh, brief in our previous lecture so if you want any uh, information about this that so you can just uh, watch our video on bolaster culture okay so historical evidences indicates that the india exported this valuable mer uh, merchandise to greece and no more than 2000 years ago so we have a we have a history we have a history for these uh, um, pearls okay so the global cultured pearl industry has an estimated wholesale value of us uh, 1.1 billion and a retail value between uh, US uh, 3.5 billion dollar. So altogether, the 32 countries are at some stages of pearl culture, from pilot scale research to major production. And in recent years, some of these have expanded their industries rapidly to garner a share of the multi-billion dollar industry that's why the marine pearl farming is also gaining more importance because it know we know that it is a jewel from the sea and it is really the oldest gems okay and uh, the uh, pearl uh, demand of the pearl is very high in the market that's why the number of countries number of people they are moved towards to to uh, doing this farming okay that is the uh, marine pearl farming now, this is the uh, uh, this is about the mariculture. Okay, 
the what is mariculture then uh, what uh, what is the status of our, uh, our country in mariculture which type of fin fish culture is there non fin fish culture is there okay now we move towards the next aspect that is the species suitable for marine uh, marine fin fish culture two type of fish is there uh, fin fish is there and non fin fish is there so that particular fish they have a uh, fins okay the fin the fish they have uh, swim with the help of their fin they are called fin fish apart from the, those do not have the fin but they are uh, living in the water for example uh, the crab is there lobster is there prawn is there then the mussel is there okay oyster is there so species suitable for marine fin fish culture number one is cobia that is the rechitron condam see this is the picture of this cobia this cobia is a migratory predatory pelagic fish and it is native to tropical and subtropical seas of the world so you can see in this picture this is the cobia it's one of the uh, promising uh, fish for uh, mariculture used in mariculture so it is a promising fish for the aquaculture and since the late 1990s has become an important aquaculture species in the world next silver pampano that is the trichinus brochi so silver pampano trichinus trichinus uh, brochi is one of the ideal species suitable for the brackish water aquaculture in earthen ponds as well as mariculture in sea cages mainly due to its fast growth good meat quality and high market demand these silver pompano is uh, this fish is very important as far as the um, medicinal property is concerned as far as their taste is there uh, delicious taste so because of this uh, quality uh, this uh, this fish have a very high demand in the market apart from having a good taste no doubt this fish has a very good taste it is, it is very delicious taste but with the fewer spines the silver pampano has high level of omega 3 fatty acids so see here the omega 3 fatty acids it is very important so these the omega 3 fatty acids such as epa and dha in their meat in, it is an it is present in high quantity in their meat that's why this species is cultured throughout the uh, means their uh, the demand is very high in the global market and the silver pampano also called as a snub nose pampano it is ca caught only sporadically in the commercial fishery and hence it is availability is rather scarce okay now the in indian pampano trichinus uh, trichinus mukali so indian pampano is an important marine food fish uh, it is widely distributed in shallow coastal waters and indo west pacific region and is considered to be the suitable for the mariculture activity so this fish is bred during the february april and adult males and females weighing uh, 2.5 to 3.3 kg are raised in a recirculating aquaculture system it's called ras that is recirculating aquaculture system this is the also important fish species in the mariculture uh, activity okay now the orange spotted grouper that is ifenifilus uh, quidis so the orange spotted grouper ifenifilus uh, quidis also known as the brown spotted rock cod so you can see in this picture they have the number of spotted spots okay so the orange spotted grouper occurs in coral reefs especially those along mainland coast and the large ice lines and this fish have a spectacular tasting flesh which attain a high value in the market that's why their demand is very high and this species this orange spotted grouper also used as a very good species for mariculture activity the next species that is the sea bass we can say this baramundi let's cal uh, uh, cal so the let's calcifer known as the baramundi baramundi perch giant sea perch or the asian sea bass is native to coastal areas in the indian and the western pacific oceans and the baramundi are the catadromous means it is spending most of their life in fresh water and migrating to salt water in order to breed so see this is the fish it's called catadromous catadromous means the, they are uh, these fish this fish uh, spending their most of their lifetime in a fresh water 
and when it get matured okay and for their breeding purpose it migrates towards the soil water that is called the sea water okay for the breeding purpose and the baramundi it is a uh, this, uh, this fish valuable both as a recreational and the commercial fish with a high fairly stable price in the market and see this is the one of the very important uh, fish species in our india uh, sea bass and it is cultured throughout the coastal region for the uh, high demand in the market okay next this snapper huge genus species so these are all images they have, have taken from the uh, internet okay so the root genus is the genus which contain many species especially the large ones larger ones which are important uh, commercial fish and which are considered to be the excellent food fish in the tropics so this fish is also uh, used in the mariculture activity and their demand is also high because of the excellent food fish an important market species throughout the indo pacific region and a good aquaculture species because it doesn't get rancid easily when frozen so after frozen condition they are also uh, remain a fresh condition they are, they doesn't get a rancid it rancid quickly okay so because of that particular property this fish is used in mariculture activity and their demand is also huge in the market number of uh, globally it, it is demanded okay now the emperor lutrinus species so the, it is found uh, in shallow reefs and the cigar uh, sea grass beds the emperor fish is a delicacy in enjoyed worldwide they live in a large schools and are a favorite among fishermen and city dwellers across in india uh, there are many varieties of the emperor fish like the red emperor and the trumpet emperor so the what makes it sort after it it uh, after its test its uh, texture the emperor fish is known to be less oily and have a mild and slightly sweet flavor that's why this fish they are also we can just uh, the uh, they are favorite among the fishermen as well as the city dwellers across all over the indian um, coastal region okay so these are the some uh, fish species that that are used in the mariculture activity okay not only these fishes but also number of also fishes they we have uh, number of fish uh, fishes culture uh, they are used in the mariculture few of them i have just uh, elaborate here now the advantages of marine fin fish culture why this uh, fin fish fish culture should be there so number one and very important um, aspect or advantages over this ma marine uh, marine fin fish culture is the socio economic upliftment of the coastal fishers by generating employment employment generation is very important so by uh, because of this um, marine fin fish culture the socio economic upliftment of this coastal fishers those who are uh, poor and they are by by culturing these species by cul by culturing the mariculture activity by taking the mariculture activity their uh, livelihood increases the socio economic um, they are strong okay then the enhanced production of seafood for human consumption we have done captured fisheries in our uh, in our surrounding sea but due to this mariculture we are uh, able to culture number of fish species in a confined area and because of this mariculture we, we can we can say that the it is a substitute for the what we can say the captured fisheries okay and uh, also it enhances the production of uh, seafood for the again the human consumption okay and it enhances the production of high value marine fin fish because of this marine fin fish culture then increasing the national seafood export by exporting number of uh, uh, by exporting the seafood uh, we have we get uh, enough for an exchange okay so that's why these marine fin fish culture also increases the national seafood export and the substitution of seafood imports okay an opportunity uh, for commercially viable business opportunities for the ent uh, entrepreneurs so see here it is not uh, uh, limited to the only just go and culture and take and sell no the all these uh, marine culture also associated with the other interest other uh, number of uh, uh, industries 
uh, ministries, for example, the MPDA is there, number of uh, uh, Ministry of Commerce is there, okay, Ministry of Agriculture, Ministry of Fisheries, okay, an alternate livelihood option for the coastal fishers as catch from seas dwindling. Okay, these are the advantages of the marine fin fish culture. Okay, and uh, with this, uh, we have today discussed the what is mariculture, then uh, the, the status of mariculture in uh, uh, of our India, then the we have, we have discussed the uh, species for used in mariculture, and lastly we have discussed these advantages of marine fin fish culture. Okay, with this. I am stopping here and I end this lecture and the last point of this uh, uh, unit as well as this paper is the uh, government participation in aquaculture. Okay, so this government participation in aquaculture is the last part of this uh, uh, paper of the unit. So we will discuss in our next lecture. Till then, goodbye. Thank you.